Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're talking about some beautiful new releases from Givenchy. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As many of you know, I now have an online beauty consulting service, which is where you get the chance to talk to me through a video chat, one-on-one, -on -one, live. So this is a perfect opportunity. If you have questions about your current makeup kit, your makeup collection, and you're just unsure about certain products, or if you'd like some advice about purchasing your products, but you don't want added sales pressure, the benefit of my service is I work for myself, I don't work for any brand, so I will just recommend whatever products I think will work best for you. So to book your appointment today, or to get a gift card for another makeup lover, click the link in the description box down below. Okay, so the products here from Givenchy were sent to me in PR, but these are my own thoughts and opinions. I was just sent these beautiful items very kindly from Givenchy, and I'm just gonna share with you my thoughts, my opinions, review, etc. So the first items are the Le Rouge Sheer Velvet. These are brand new sheer hydrating matte lipsticks that I have lots of thoughts and opinions about. And then we also have a new version of L'Interdit Eau de Parfum. This is the Rouge or Red collection, which is a continuation off of the original L'Interdit perfume, which I know many of you are familiar with. So I think I want to start with lipstick first. I love color. So let's dive into this new sheer soft matte lipstick formula. So these retail at 38 US plus tax and there are 10 to 12 shades depending on what part of the world you live in. These are described as a blurring matte lipstick. So the information goes as the following, an innovative matte vibrant texture. With Le Rouge Sheer Velvet, Givenchy imagines a blurring, comfortable and soft matte lipstick, a veil of diffuse, blurry color, unique and signature. Le Rouge Sheer Velvet boasts a sensory, lightweight texture, providing 12 hours of hold and comfort. While the Le Rouge Deep Velvet that came out, I think last year or the year before, that was a bit more daring and bold and you would see instant color as soon as you would apply. The new Sheer Velvet formula offers a soft veil of color and is supposed to be a bit more comfortable, a bit more hydrating. I believe there's wild mango butter infused as well as vitamin E, so it's supposed to be a very comfortable, long-lasting lipstick. Cutting edge waxes create a supple, even film while the brand new powder pigments create a vibrant and blurring effect on the lips. So previously with the deep velvet lipsticks, we had a deep red, red wine case here. This is velvet and the case comes off. Now with the new sheer velvet, we have a beautiful dusty rose pink and it's the same format. So if you wanted to switch your cases, you can definitely feel free to do so. I personally am going to keep my cases on the respective lipsticks because the deep velvet is so intense and so bold that I want to keep this rich case on here just for myself so I know what I'm grabbing for and then this more soft rosewood is going to be for the sheer lipsticks. Now what's interesting is these new lipsticks are refillable. So we have our case here on top and then the lipstick but then this part here comes off. So you can in fact buy the refill without having to buy the entire lipstick. So currently the refills are only available in the topmost sold colors. However, I hope or I think that they will gradually move towards having more refillable products. I know as far as their skincare line is concerned, there are a lot of refill options for the skincare collections. 
which is nice because I don't think that luxury and sustainability have to be at odds with each other. I think providing refills for products is really nice and it's really the case here that is extra and that we love and I personally don't have an issue with getting a refill even if it's a luxury. Like for me, that doesn't take away from the luxury aspect. So I'm very happy to see this. I hope to see more of their lipsticks have that refillable component. Correction, I said earlier that there are 10 to 12 shades. There are 10 to 11 shades and it's supposed to have a 12 hour wear. So only 11 shades. Let's go through the gauntlet of the shades available. So we have number 10, which is a warm toned beige nude. Number 16, nude boisé, which is a neutral beige infused with a powdery pink. 17, rouge érable, a maple red with a touch of brown. 18, nude fumé, a smoky cool tone muted nude with a touch of red. 23, rose irrésistible, a vibrant bright pink. 27, Rouge Infusé, a subtle shade of deep red infused with dusky pink. 32, Rouge Brique, a brick red with a dusty orange tone for vibrant matte coral. 34, Rouge Safran, this is an online exclusive shade. It's a deep earthy orange infused with a burnt saffron and a hint of red. Number 36, L'Interdit, this is Givenchy's iconic classic signature red. It's a bright tomato red that is Givenchy's iconic red. 37, Rouge Grainé. It's a vibrant warm toned red. I think that's a shade I would enjoy as well. And last but not least, number 39, Rouge Grenat. A deep, dark, intense burgundy red with brown and purple undertones. I think this would be a beautiful shade for the fall, winter, cooler months. As I mentioned earlier, there are only four shades available currently for refill. These include number 16, Nude Boisé, 27, Rouge Infusé, 36, L'Interdit, and 37, Rouge Grainé. The two shades that I received are number 16, Nude Boisé, and 36, L'Interdit. I actually have number 36 L'Interdit in the Deep Velvet formula as well, so I will provide some swatch comparisons in a few moments. I think we should start off with the lighter shade Nude Boisé, and we'll start off with some hand swatches here. I'm going to do a sheer swatch and then a more intense swatch just to show you how you can wear this. So as you can see, you can definitely do a very sheer almost stain of your lips but better and just sort of blur it onto the lips or do a more intense your lip but better and if you wanted to add a lip liner just to define the contour i think it's a good idea but these don't bleed you don't need a lip liner to stop the bleeding it's more if you just want to have a more defined lip something to note i don't really smell a fragrance I smell just like a cosmetic product. It doesn't smell like vanilla or a cupcake. It kind of just smells like a lipstick. So let's go ahead and do one swipe and then I'll build it up. So this is just one swipe. As you can see, it's still very sheer, but it looks like my lip but better, almost as if I added like a matte tinted lip balm. Let's go ahead and just add a bit more color just to build it up a bit. So I think this is the most intense build up you'll get with number 16 Nude Boisé. It is just like that perfect your lip but better. It's nude, it's a little brown, a little pink. What was it described as? It's a neutral beige infused with a powdery pink. It doesn't lean too cool or too warm. It just looks really nice. I like this kind of no fuss, don't have to think about it. You wouldn't even really need a mirror because it's not super bold and red. You can go over your lip line a little bit. It's not that bad. The formula feels remarkable. It doesn't feel like you have anything on your lips. I know it's this sheer powdery lightweight formula, but it almost feels like a chapstick. It doesn't feel drying whatsoever. I know it's fresh on my lips now, but we will talk about the wear test later. But this just feels 
lightweight. It feels like a chapstick. I think it's that mango butter in here that's really just helping with the hydration. This truly feels like I have nothing on my lips. It is so lightweight, so sheer. Sometimes matte bullet lipsticks can feel a bit waxy and heavy and like you have like a thick layer on your lips. This does not do that. It's very, very comfortable. And I love this color. I'm really falling into a nude lip season. I have been known for bold red lips, but because I've been wearing a lot of like bold eyeshadow looks, I do love this type of neutral, but since it's not too light or too sheer, it does offer you a nice amount of color as well. So even with a more neutral eye, this still is very flattering. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and we can move into a deeper, bolder statement lip. All right, so 36 L'Interdit. This is the classic iconic red for Givenchy. I'm gonna do what I did before, do two swatches, one more sheer and one more built up, and then I will provide swatches compared to the deep velvet formula. So here we have it sheared out more like a stain, and then the swatch next to it is more true to color how I would wear it, just layered a few times. And then next to that is the Le Rouge Deep Velvet formula, which as you can tell is a bit more intense. The Deep Velvet formula is a very saturated, very opaque uh, matte lipsticks. So you can see a difference here in the finish, the texture, and also the color payoff. Let's go ahead and do one swipe and then we'll build it up. So with one swipe, you remain in that lip stain category and you could just like blot a little bit more if you wanted a very sheer natural red lip stain. It's very nice, but I'm going to go ahead and apply a few more layers just to give it like the more signature look that I would wear it more naturally. This is about as intense as this lipstick will get. I did apply a few layers here. So if I were to wear this just like as a normal day, not for a video, this is how I would wear this color here. It's the exact same formula and texture as the previous lipstick. Super sheer, lightweight. You don't feel like you're wearing anything at all. It feels like a chapstick. It's incredibly comfortable and lightweight. It's a really, really lovely formula. I'm gonna go ahead and include some wear tests. I find that this lipstick really holds up to eating and drinking and just living your life. Clearly at the end of a long day, this is not going to look exactly the same. I find that the center of the mouth fades away a little bit faster than the rest. You do get a nice contour outline. And again, this does not bleed. It doesn't feather away. It just stays in place. If you want to go in with a lip liner, you're more than welcome to, but I don't think it's necessary. It just depends on your lip shape. I know some women like to just fill in the contour first if you have a lip shape that you just like to correct. But I think that after several hours of wear, this still looks nice. You may want to touch it up with a bit of gloss or you can go in and add a bit more color, but it doesn't look bad. Sometimes when you wear a lipstick for several hours, it looks bad. You know, it kind of like fades away. You just have like a weird outline that's kind of wonky, but this still looks nice. You definitely could plan to wear this for several hours without really having to touch it up. As far as mask wearing goes, I don't think it's 100% mask proof, but it is quite mask resistant. You don't have to worry about looking like the Joker. Clearly a darker color like this might be a bit more risky than the nude color. If I was going to be wearing a mask off and on personally, I would go with the number 16 because it's a bit more nude and it's just you don't notice as much if you know your nose and whatever mask you're wearing might press against your mouth. But overall, it's a great lipstick, a great formula, great texture, so comfortable. And I think I may enjoy this more than the Deep Velvet formula, which is shocking because I really like this Deep Velvet formula, but the texture is more lightweight. It feels more sheer. It just feels invisible, like you have nothing on your lips. And I kind of like this softer, more blurred look of a lipstick. So I really, really like these. 
All right, let's move on to L'Interdit Eau de Parfum Rouge. Let's go ahead and read about this new fragrance here. This new opus pays tribute to an iconic color of L'Interdit. As we talked about before, there is an iconic red shade that I'm wearing on my lips that is signature for Givenchy. And so this was the inspiration here for the design and packaging of this fragrance. It has a spicy red accord and was created by not one, but three master perfumers at Givenchy. Dominique Ropion, Anne Flippo, and Fanny Ball all created this new Eau de Parfum Rouge. The original floral bouquet of L'Interdit is overtaken by this tangy, citrusy, orange accord. What I find remarkable is that the world of perfume making, the nose, the person who creates the perfume, this is very much a boys club. It still is. Even though you might think of fragrance as a very feminine thing, it's very much a boys club and there's often a lot of nepotism involved. And what I like seeing here is that there are three people who created this perfume. Two of them are women. I like seeing women create perfumes for women as well. And I also like seeing a collaborative effort even on a scale of master perfumers for Givenchy. I like seeing this team spirit approach. I will be sure to compare this to a few other NTLD versions that I have. I have the Eau de Parfum Intense and the Eau de Parfum Millissime version that came out in the spring, I believe. If you think of the classic NTLD Eau de Parfum, you get some floral woody notes with some tuberose and you still get this with this red version here however once the fragrance dries down you get this like blood orange maybe just like a hint of citrus not green but just like orange orange zest orange fruit which makes it a little bit lighter and gives it a little twist and of course we have to talk about the packaging this is such a gorgeous red. It's a very deep, intense red, but you can also sort of see through the glass bottle. It reminds me of a few years ago when Chanel did their number five in a red bottle and that was just like so beautiful and iconic. This reminds me of that, except of course, this is a new fragrance altogether. It's part of the Antel D family, but this is not the same uh, formula or perfume as the regular Intel D. So if you're looking for an excuse to buy this because the packaging is gorgeous, rest assured you will also be buying a new fragrance, not just a copy of what you already own. And the more it dries down, the more it smells different. When you spray it right away, it will smell a lot like the Interdit Eau de Parfum, the Intense, it does smell very similar, but as it dries down, you see differences in the notes. The ginger stands out. I swear I get a soft, powdery, slightly sweet, like a little bit of like powdered sugar, but it's not a super heavy, uh, syrupy, caramel intense. It's just like a light dusting of like baby powder and a little bit of icing sugar but then you're saved with these white florals and these orange, these blood orange notes, which makes it a little bit lighter. It's not going to be a very heavy gourmand. It's like gourmand adjacent, but it's not going to be like Lancôme, La Vie est Belle, you know, that very caramel coffee syrupy. This is a bit lighter, it's a bit fresher, and it's nice seeing the same DNA, but just like a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a different take. It reminds me a little bit of Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum with that orange note, although I would have to say that the Coco Mademoiselle has a lot more patchouli. This here, I think, has some patchouli somewhere. I can't smell it and it doesn't show up on me. This lasts all day, like all day. I sprayed a few times here. I will be smelling like this fragrance for the next several hours. You do not have to touch up. I mean, you can if you want to. I wouldn't judge you because I'm also very extra, but this perfume has a very 
long lasting life on your skin. And if you are concerned that this will be too much like the other versions, just wait, let it dry down, let it just like melt into your skin and you will see a transformation. Now, the intense version of the Interdit Eau de Parfum is definitely more of a heavy hitter. You get more vanilla, a little bit of tonka bean, just like a little bit more sweet and syrupy. And I, I swear that this has like star anise, just that like sweet licorice-y end. And it smells a bit creamy if a perfume can smell creamy. So there is a difference. This one here is definitely more of a heavy hitter, more gourmand, almost like a blanket of sweet caramel vanilla syrup. Whereas this one here, again is saved by those orange notes. And then the Millisim edition, which came out in the spring, is almost like a little bit warmer, like a little bit more of a warm, spicy notes. You do get these nice white florals, like the tuberose, and I think jasmine as well. And Millisim also has ginger and orange, but the orange in Millisim is more of like a bitter orange. It's not as like, soft and subtle. The orange in this kind of punches out a bit more. And I think there's also some almond. So it's in the same family, but very different. You know, you do get some similar notes, but just the way that these are arranged is very different. The mini sim is almost more just like a more citrusy, orangey fragrance, whereas the red or rouge version is more subtle and I think that this could be a day or nighttime perfume. I I mean, I think you should wear whatever you want, but I don't think it's as heavy as the intense version. So you could spritz this in the day and wear it very effortlessly. So that is today's video. This is the new collection from Givenchy. Overall, I have to say it's a 10 out of 10. I love it. I hope you can get yourself a sample of this fragrance or go test it out in store. I know it's still precarious to do so, but buying a fragrance blind can be a bit risky. However, I do think that this is beautiful. It's definitely my type of fragrance. It has that similar gourmand DNA, but a little bit lighter. So I personally am extremely happy with this. As far as the lipsticks go, I think it's pretty clear that I like them and why. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? I know a lot of you have messaged me about this new lipstick formula, asking me when it's coming out and what I'm going to swatch. So here you are. And let me know in the comments if you've picked these up already and which colors you've gotten. I'm thinking of getting a couple more of the more nude. I love the red, but I really like the nude lipstick in this one because the formula is so sheer and lightweight and something about the nude finish I think looks really nice. So I might get at least one more color in the nude family. If you're new to my channel or if you've been watching me for a while but just haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Those are all fabulous ways to encourage me here on my channel. So on that note, I think this is all I have for you guys for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.